You are welcome back to my channel once again. Chemistry Practical 2024, question number three. This is the likely questions that will come out in question number three. I'm not saying that this is the exact question. This is the, I'm not saying that this is the exact number three question. But we have model questions that we can work with. And that's what I'm going to teach you right now. Describe one chemical test to distinguish between carbon four oxide and sulfur four oxide. A chemical test to, to distinguish between solution. A chemical test to distinguish between carbon four oxide, which is CO2, and sulfur four oxide. If you want to distinguish between the two, and it's a chemical test, remember SO2 is a reducing agent. Whereas CO2 is not. So we are going to make use of a reducing uh, an oxidizing agent to differentiate between the two. And what's that oxidizing agent? Is that how we use KMNO4, KMNO4 or K2Cr2O7. The two are oxidizing agents. Potassium, potassium tetra ozomanganate 7 is an oxidizing agent. Potassium eta oxo dichromate 6 is also an oxidizing agent. So if we use either of these two and pass these two chemical solutions inside the two, what are we going to observe? Automatically, if we are using KMNO4, the purple color of KMNO4 changes from purple to what? To colorless. It shows the presence of sulfur oxide. Whereas, Carbon four oxide will not have any effect. Carbon four oxide will not have any effect on the purple color of KMNO4, potassium epta ozodichromate 6. That is a chemical test to differentiate between carbon four oxide and sulfur four oxide. Remember, sulfur four oxide is a reducing agent. Carbon four oxide is not a reducing agent. Because of that, using either of these oxidizing agents, there will be a change of color. The color of this purple returns to colorless, showing the presence of a sulfur four oxide. But if the color, if the purple color still remains, it means that carbon four oxide is present. So that's the chemical reagent. I mean, these are the chemical reagents that we can use to differentiate between carbon four oxide and sulfur four oxide. Let's move to the next question now. This is another question number three. State the laboratory method of collection of each of the following gases. My dear lovely students, I want you to prepare yourself and read on gases. Whether laboratory preparation of gas and the method of collection of gases. It is very, very important. Method of collecting gases. Look at hydrogen gas. In the laboratory preparation of hydrogen gas, this gas is prepared by upward delivery of gas. Upward, upward delivery of gas. Anytime you have to write a method of preparation of gas, please, these two statements are very important. Upward delivery of gas, downward displacement of air. Downward, downward displacement of air. Downward displacement of what? Of air. That's how to write it for you in order to get the correct mark, the full mark. Upward delivery of gas. This is how we prepare it, like this. This is the delivery tool. This is how the delivery tool will go, and then the gas will go upward. So if the gas is going upward, the air is coming down. And that is why we say upward delivery of gas, downward di displacement of air. We normally prepare gas that are less denser than... I will still talk about that. Upward delivery of gas, downward displacement of air. For ammonia gas... Ammonia gas is what is upward delivery. Upward delivery of gas. Upward delivery. And remember, since both of uh, ammonia gas and hydrogen gas has the same method of collection. So the same thing, what I put here is what you are going to write here too. Upward delivery of gas, downward displacement of air. Upward delivery of gas, downward displacement of air. But for uh, hydrogen chloride gas, this one is downward delivery of gas. Downward delivery of gas. Downward delivery of gas. 
downward delivery of gas and what upward displacement of air downward delivery which means that the gas is coming down like this then the air will be going up downward delivery of gas upward displacement of air that is for hydrogen chloride gas now we move to the reason why uh, they are prepared or their method of collection is like that Roman figure 2, give reason for each of the answers stated in this 3BII. Now, why do we prepare, why is method of collection of hydrogen gas is upward? The reason is that it is less denser, or you can say it is lighter, less denser, less denser than the air, less denser, less denser than the air. So every gas Every gas that is less denser than air are prepared by their method of collection is upward delivery. If a gas is less denser than air, the method of collection is upward delivery of gas and downward displacement of air. The same reason for hydrogen is for ammonia gas. Ammonia gas is also less denser, or you can say it is lighter than air. Ammonia gas is lighter than air. Hydrogen gas is lighter than air. And that is the reason. That is the reason for their collection. That is the reason why they are collected upward. Upward delivery of gas and downward displacement of air. For hydrogen chloride gas, you know, is the only one that is different from the two. Is downward delivery of gas. The reason for that is because it is denser. It is denser than air. Or we can say it is heavier than air. That is why hydrogen chloride gas is prepared by what? Downward delivery of gas and upward displacement of air. Let's move to the next question now. Question number three, C. State the method used in separating each of the following mixture. Please, my dear lovely student, make sure you read on separation techniques as well. It is very important. Now, uh, two miscible liquids two miscible liquids the method used to separate two miscible liquids we have two methods we can use to separate two miscible liquids one is simple simple distillation simple distillation simple distillation and what simple distillation and what and fractional distillation fractional distillation these are the two methods we can use to separate two miscible liquids. And what is the physical properties? Why do we make use of simple distillation and fractional distillation? It's just based on their boiling point. For simple distillation, it's wide boiling point between the two liquids. For fractional distillation, it is close boiling point between the two liquids or between the liquids. So if you want to separate mixture of miscible liquids, note the word miscible. Miscible liquids will make use of simple distillation or fractional distillation. These are the two methods that we can use to separate miscible liquids. So let's move on to the next question, which says uh, the method we can use to separate soluble and insoluble salt. For us to separate soluble and insoluble salt, the first thing we need to do is to add water, dissolution. So after the dissolution, then we are going to filter. We filter. So the first method there we can say filtration. Filtration. We can say filtration. After filtration, then we evaporate. The filtration is meant for the soluble one. The soluble one will enter through the filter paper. Then the insoluble one will be on, on, on the surface of this filter paper, which we regarded as residue. The insoluble one will be on the surface of the filter paper and we call that one residue. Whereas the one that passed through the filter paper, we call that one filtrate. So the residue, you have already removed the insoluble one out. For the filtrate, how can you now get your salt back? Because it's already in soluble form. So you can now evaporate. Evaporation, or you can say crystallization. Evaporation. That evaporation is to remove the water that you've added in the first instance. Read more on separation techniques. Question 3D. Explain briefly why a solution of KCL, why a solution of KCL does not give a gas when mixed with what? When mixed with NHCO3. 
salt solution. But Al Cl3 does is very simple. Why is it that when you add this solution, potassium chloride, to sodium trazocarbonate 4, it does not give a gas? Remember that every trazocarbonate 4 salt, every hydrogen trazocarbonate 4 salt decomposes, number one. Number two, every hydrogen trazocarbonate 4 salt gives a gas. Immediately they are reacted with an acid. Take for instance, this is what I'm saying. If you have NaHCO3, and then we add a gas, which we add an acid. We add an acid, hydrochloric acid. What happens is that this kind of reaction is going to give an evaporation of a colorless and odorless gas, which we term slime water making, and that gas is carbon-4. So this kind of reaction we are going to have NaCl plus what? Plus water and plus carbon-4. Now, the carbon-4 oxide is from a CO3. The question is now saying that KCl, when added to this one, is not going to give a gas. The gas we are referring to is a carbon-4 oxide gas. But right now, KCl, if you react with this, it will not give it. It's very simple. KCl will not hydrolyze to give acid. To give an acid. Why? Because this salt is a salt that is formed from a strong alkaline and a strong acid. Because of that, KCl will not hydrolyze to give acid. But when it comes to AlCl3, Aluminium chloride. Aluminium chloride will hydrolyze to give hydrochloric acid. Addition of water to AlCl3, which is aluminium chloride. Addition of water to this salt solution will produce hydrochloric acid. Because of that, the hydrochloric acid will eventually react with sodium carbonate to give a what? To give a gas. This is the equation of the reaction. So the reason it does that KCl, potassium chloride, does not undergo hydrolysis or KCl will not produce hydrochloric acid when water is added. Whereas aluminium chloride hydrolyzes to give hydrochloric acid, which reacts with sodium with sodium hydrogen trazocarbonate 4 to produce carbon 4 oxide gas. So that's the reason why KCl will not react to produce gas with sodium carbonate whereas aluminium chloride will react to give a gas. I said potassium chloride will not react with sodium hydrogen trazocarbonate 4 to give a gas whereas aluminium trazocarbonate 4 will react with sodium hydrogen trazocarbonate 4 to give carbon 4 oxide gas because aluminium chloride will hydrolyze to give aluminium chloride will hydrolyze to give hydrochloric acid. Thank you.